definitely felt different because of all these things. I definitely felt a little bitter, um, some resentment towards the people that were making me do these things since I had no say in the matter. Um, so I've been doing YouTube for about a year now, and I finally feel comfortable sharing uh, a little bit about my past and my childhood. Um, this channel is meant to be all about health and fitness, and this definitely falls within the health aspect of health and fitness. It's more on the mental and emotional side, um, more about my past. And just to keep the fitness theme going as well, I'm going to overlay my latest leg workout video so that you guys can watch something while I'm just here rambling about my past. But I think it is something important for me to discuss and just to share because there might be other people that are dealing with something similar or something not exactly the same, but they can take a lesson or two out of what I have to say from my experience so far. So when I was around six or seven years old, I was diagnosed with a 20% hearing loss in both my left and right ear. And that had a large impact on me as a kid because it forced me uh, to wear hearing aids through all of elementary school, basically through grade two when I was diagnosed all the way up until grade eight. Um, my parents and teachers essentially forced me to wear hearing aids and I don't blame them at all now for wanting me to wear those. Um, I do think the decision for them to not give me any option or choice as a child was a little bit harsh uh, in the sense that it just made me feel so different from all the other kids in class. I mean, a 20% loss in both years is certainly significant, but I'm not heavily impaired in any way. I go about my life today without hearing aids at all um, since grade eight. I've been able to, you know, operate normally in life. Um, so I think it was a little bit harsh to not give me an option as a kid, like I said. I'm sure that they felt by giving me these hearing aids, it would help with my education and would help me be able to hear and feel like the rest of the kids in the school. And I was in an elementary school with about 600 other kids, and I was one of about five that had a hearing loss. Uh, and we had to participate in a special class for kids that had impairments, vision impairments and hearing impairments. Um, and there was only about 10 of us in the whole school that were in this class with vision or hearing impairments. So just being in a massive minority like that already definitely made me felt very different from a lot of the other kids and having to wear something physical on my body that separated me from them uh, was definitely kind of hard to process as a seven to 13 year old. Um, that kind of window within elementary school when I had the diagnosis, when I was forced to wear hearing aids. Um, that whole experience for me was very difficult to navigate because every time I had to wear them, you know, during school hours, it just made me feel so different. Every time I popped them on, I felt like I turned into a completely different person. I became shy, I became very quiet, I became easily distracted because I wasn't used to having all this extra volume in my ears as well. So all the extra noises and stuff were very distracting because it's an artificial sound too. It's not like a real sound. I mean, it's a microphone with essentially a speaker directly in your ear. So everything sounds very digital and sounds very artificial. A couple things that they made me and a few of the other students do that had this impairment was they would always make us sit in the front of the class, despite the fact that we were wearing aids, uh, hearing aids, they would still make us sit at the very front of the classroom. Um, so that automatically kind of made you feel like special or different um, because they would call you out on it sometimes. If I tried to sit with my friends near the back or in the middle of the classroom, they would sometimes call you out by name and, and just call you out individually and make you come and sit um, in the front of the class where typically no one wanted to sit. So that in itself made you feel very kind of isolated. And another thing that they would have us do, uh, us kids that had hearing aids, is that they would attach these little receivers on the back of our hearing aids, uh, wireless ones, but then the teacher would have to wear this sort of FM transmitter system where it was like a headset that went around their ears and went uh, like a microphone that went to their mouth. And then they had a wire that attached to like a battery pack. And then that was essentially like a wireless microphone just to the kids that had hearing aids. Um, so not only did you have hearing aids, not only did you have to sit at the front, but you also had to give this teacher this thing that they clearly probably didn't want to wear um, and was probably annoying for them to wear because they would constantly be adjusting it um, and it would run out of battery and they'd have to change the battery in the middle of class sometimes. Um, so kind of annoying for them to wear especially for only five kids out of 600. And yeah, so they would have all these things in place to, I know, only have the best of intentions to try and help us out as, as uh, kids with an impairment. So I just wanted to paint a picture so that it's easy to kind of understand what it would have been like to be one of those five kids with a hearing impairment in a school of about 600 kids. I definitely felt different because of all these things. I definitely felt a little bitter, 
um, some resentment towards the people that were making me do these things since I had no say in the matter. Um, any chance I got at all to take my hearing aids out, out and off, keep them off, I would take it. As soon as the school bell would ring, I would rip out my hearing aids, throw them in my pocket, um, and walk to the next class without them on so that I could just feel like I was one of the normal kids and, and not be seen with these in my ear. Because they were like the over-ear type. They weren't even like the invisible kind of in-ear types that they have now. Uh, so I would take every opportunity I ever got to take these off. As soon as the recess bell rang, I'd keep them off for all of recess. Uh, my teachers would get so annoyed with me, especially um, Miss Nup Brown, my uh, special ed teacher that was in charge of that special class for us. She would always get annoyed. I could tell that I was uh, not keeping them in all day. And sometimes my mom would ask me, did you wear your hearing aids today? Did you wear your hearing aids today? And I would always say yes. But of course, every chance I got, I would take them out. Um, on the bus ride home from school, uh, you know, at home, I never wore them outside of the classroom uh, because I just did not feel like I needed them and I did not want to wear them. You know, looking back now, I sometimes think it's silly and I sometimes struggle with, you know, why, why didn't you just keep them in? You know, why did you feel so much resentment? Why did you feel so different? Why did you just have bitterness towards the fact that you had this, um, this problem? And why didn't you just use the help that was given to you and embrace it all? Um, but, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty, And when you're a kid, you can't think clearly about these things, obviously. Um, you haven't fully formed who you are or your thoughts or anything like that. You're just trying to get through the world, kind of wanting to fit in with the group um, as is human nature. And yeah, like I realize now that the cards that I were dealt were not that bad at all as a kid. There's people that have a lot, you know, harder struggles than I had. And that's sometimes the battle I have is, you know, um, wanting to not wanting to look at myself as a victim, but also accepting that I went through something that was difficult and challenging as a kid and that I should accept that and not just shove it under the rug and pretend like it was no big deal because I think it was. I still carry a lot of those memories and a lot of those same feelings into who I am today. And it's definitely um, being a factor in forming who I am today. But at the same time, I want to be grateful and I want to be thankful that um, I was dealt the cards that I was dealt with. Um, this perspective is important to know that there are others out there that, that have it a lot harder than you do. That's, that's a fact for sure. But I just wanted to shed some light on what I went through as a kid and uh, something that definitely still has an impact on me today um, and is kind of in this theme of health uh, and fitness. Not so much the fitness part, but definitely the health part, um, you know, emotionally and mentally. Um, and I think it's important to speak about experiences that we had, not only as kids, but even now, because this hearing loss is never going to leave me. I'm always going to deal with it. Um, the way a hearing loss works is there's little hairs inside of your ear canal that go to your eardrum, and those hairs pick up sounds and um, frequencies and vibrations. And if certain of those hairs die, they can never be regenerated. Um, so the doctors believe that I was just born with some of these uh, hairs in my ears just dead from birth. Um, as a defect and uh, that's why I kind of always had this it didn't you know get progressively worse from loud music or anything like that it might one day uh, if I'm not careful so I, I do have to be careful because it can degenerate um, over time and that's why a lot of you know elderly people have hearing aids that maybe didn't have a hearing loss is because hearing only degenerates it does not regenerate ever but yeah this is something that I've always had since I was a little kid my mom has a story of when I was about three years old uh, playing with a toy. My mom was like in another room calling my name and uh, I wasn't responding and she came into the room annoyed that, you know, like, why aren't you, why aren't you answering me? And then she kind of called my name softly behind me and she noticed that I didn't acknowledge her at all. And I was a three-year-old. I was not like, you know, at, a, at an age where I could like uh, consciously just ignore my mother, you know. Um, I responded every other time, you know, when I could hear her. Uh, so she kind of had, a, I think, an instinctual feeling uh, or her intuition was, I think, telling her at that time, the way she tells the story that she suspected I might have a hearing loss of some kind. Uh, and then it was confirmed when I went to school, uh, elementary school at about six or seven years old is when they fully took me to the clinics and I got all the testing done and they confirmed, yes, uh, I do have a 20% hearing loss in both ears. The way that it manifests today for me is if someone's in another room talking like my wife or just a friend or anyone else, um, I 
likely won't be able to fully hear what they're saying. I will hear their voice very clearly um, and audibly, but I just am not able to make out the words that they're pronunciating because there are those certain hairs within my ears that are dead are just not picking up all of the frequencies that it should. Um, so it kind of sounds like uniform mumbling. So it helps to really have that person in the same room with me when we're having a conversation. I know that's not always ideal or possible, but that is kind of just what I need. So I'll typically get up and go to that person. And typically I also like to see the person's face that I'm talking to because uh, a tool that I developed as a kid was to lip read. Um, and that really supplemented my hearing to be able to actually see the person's lips moving, help me um, make out the words that they were saying since I was missing some of those like frequencies or letters, I would be able to see the letter that they're pronouncing, which would connect the dots in my brain of like, okay, this is what they're saying. And finally, as well, listening to music or TV, like any kind of media, I need to have the volume typically higher than your average person to be able to fully make out the words that the actors are saying um, or fully hear the lyrics in the song. So typically my TV speaker and my car speaker um, and headphone speakers are like louder than your average person by a couple clicks. If I'm ever watching TV and I shut it off and my wife goes on to watch something after me, she'll always say, oh, it's on George volume, <laughs> which is like typically uh, at 35 and then she listens at like 25 or less. But yeah, this is obviously something that I still am struggling with today. It's something that I'll always struggle with for the rest of my life. But I think it's important to share what I went through as a kid and what I go through today with hearing loss, just in case there's anyone in your life, um, you know, that has it and then this will allow you to be maybe a bit more patient with them or understanding of their situation. Or if you have a hearing loss yourself, you can just know that you're not alone um, in that and that there are others out there like myself that have dealt with this and that are going through this and will continue to get through this, you know, as life goes on. You know, going through it wasn't easy, but it definitely molded me into who I am today. And um, at the end of the day, I'm grateful for every experience I've had in life, the good, the bad, the hard, the easy, uh, because it's all uh, led to where I am today. And that's so cliche, but it's true. I mean, uh, you know, I've learned lessons from each individual instance of my life, and that's all culminated into right now, into the present. So I'm working on looking back without any resentment. I'm working on trying to be grateful for the cards that I was dealt. And, uh, and I'm definitely at that point in my life where I'm starting to turn that corner. So if you are younger and you're struggling with this, um, just know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. You just have to be patient and you have to work on yourself to be able to get there. And I want to give a massive shout out to my parents, my awesome mom and dad. Um, they were such champs through the whole process. You know, they never showed any sense of weakness. They were always strong for me. Um, they always supported me and they always make, made me feel loved and appreciated. And I couldn't have asked for a better set of parents to support me through that journey as a kid. Um, and we are back. Sorry about that little interruption. My phone died while I was out at the park filming this video. So just bear with me. I'm going to set up my phone here and we're going to continue the video. So as I was saying, I couldn't be more blessed to have the parents that I do have. And I was completely blessed and dealt some very good cards in the parental department. So, you know, although I was dealt some cards with hearing, you know, I was dealt some amazing cards with uh, my parents and I, I couldn't be more grateful for that. Before I end the video, I also want to give a big shout out to my wife as well. She's always so supportive of me and always so patient and kind. Uh, anytime that I don't hear her and ask her like what two or three times in a row, if she's in the other room or whatever, uh, she always, you know, doesn't hesitate to just tell me again. And she's always so patient, so good with me. So I have to uh, give her a shout out and uh, thank her for that as well. Um, I'm really lucky to have found someone that is so you know, accepting and, and patient and just, uh, yeah, I just uh, couldn't be more grateful for the people in my life who have supported me and uh, been understanding with me and been patient with me. Um, so, you know, that's really the key is to surround yourself with people in life that are willing to accept you for who you are and you will find those people absolutely. Maybe not always in certain classrooms, maybe not always at a school, but you know, you just have to put yourself out there and just be genuine, be true to yourself. And uh, eventually, you know, you will find the people that you're meant to be with. And uh, that's where I feel I am today. And again, couldn't be more grateful for that. So I hope that I could paint a picture of what it's like to have a hearing loss. Um, or at least shed some light on the issue itself. And if anything, maybe just help you understand what it's like so that you can be 
more patient with those in your life that might have one. Or if you are struggling with one yourself, just be able to know that there's, uh, there's others out there like yourself, uh, me included. And, uh, and if you related to this story at all, please be sure to share your story in the comments section below or DM me on Instagram. Um, I'll link it here somewhere in the video so that you guys can you know, reach out with your story. I'd love to hear it. Um, love to connect with more of you guys. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you got any value from this video. And guys, I know some of you are watching that are not currently subscribed to the channel. So if you guys wouldn't mind, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe because it really does help the channel grow. Um, I am pushing 400 subscribers this year. That is my goal to reach 100 subscribers by the end of this year. Um, I'm already, I think, in the 90s right now. So, you know, not far to go. But if we can make that happen, that would just uh, that would just blow me away. Um, and I would really appreciate it. So thank you guys for your support. Thanks for watching. And till next time.